Welcome back to Candy Adventures, and today we're gonna do a catch and cook number four, except with a twist. Speaking of a twist, we're gonna go full hunter-gatherer. Everything you see in the jungle is the only thing that we're gonna be able to put on the table. We're gonna get our salt, our peppers, our... Don't be a prude, it's 2020. We're gonna get our seasoning, our salt, and our pepper. Why are you naked? Everything that we get from the from the jungle because we're going hunter-gatherer style. Well, why we're going to go to the jungle and get some coconuts. We're going to go to the sea and get some fish. We're also going to get our salt from the sea. Let's do it. Oh, God. No. All right, since I guess she's being a prudish puritanical uh, dictator here, and we're not gonna do this the fun way and the right way, I put some clothes on and we're gonna go look for our food. We do things in stints of weekend time increments. So today is our first day of our weekend. So we're gonna be getting our vegetables. We're gonna try to find some vegetables or fruits or anything like that and or any of our seasonings. And then tomorrow, as uh, some people in the comments wanted, we're gonna be taking a spear gun out and trying to either spear something or catch something with rod and reel for our meat. What did you find? So, things haven't got that desperate yet. But would you? Would you starve to death or would you Would you eat human flesh? I know that's a pretty deep question for so quick into this funny video. I think I'd starve to death before I ate a person. I really would, so. I second that. In the comments, would you eat a human or would you starve to death? I'd starve to death on that airplane crash up in the Andes Mountains. I would have. I would have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect our seasoning. And uh, the most ancient and important of all seasonings, we're going to get some salt. And we're going to get it from the Pacific Ocean here. And we're going to see how much salt we can get from two liters of water. Success! We caught salt water out of the ocean. Please clap. Pretty, pretty good so far. So, good start. All right, because we're not gonna be using any rice or potatoes or uh, anything else like that, we're looking for something, maybe something kind of starchy. Um, maybe some sort of wild yam or um, some bananas or mangoes or something like that we can have with our hopefully cotton fish or crabs tomorrow. Maybe a little too small to eat. Chris and I found some bananas. There seems to be a whole group of the trees are right around here. And these are not gonna be your dull bananas. These are local bananas. They're smaller and when they ripen, I've heard they're much sweeter. In our research, when trying to figure out how to harvest these local bananas, because they grow more like a grass, you can actually cut them from the lowest leaf and that will cause the bananas to re-sprout. Whereas if you only cut where the banana is coming off, it might not grow back or it takes a lot longer. We're gonna edit it down to one hard swing. To make it look cooler? Yeah. Okay, that was cool. Here's the aha. The little bananas. All right, so there's our little bananas. And for also what we've read, correct us if we're wrong, but when this flower that's on the end part of these bananas uh, comes off like this and it turns brown, there's a flower here, is that there also means that they're, uh, they can be harvested. There's also this, um, I want to use the word phallic looking thing. Uh, and I think that you can eat this. I think it's called a banana heart, but I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to take this too and research it, but I think we can eat this. So this is the leaf of a breadfruit tree. They look uh, very similar to oak leaves that you would find in the United States. Breadfruit is supposed to be like a very large starchy fruit. 
And it's also cooked more like rice or potatoes. And they get really big and it takes a, a while for them to ripen up for us to be able to harvest. And we've only found really small ones. Okay, the fun thing about the jungle, it's very dense and full of uh, lush vegetation, but it's also lacking wind. All this vegetation keeps the wind out and it is extraordinarily hot uh, and it starts to get sweaty. And it's, we, put some, uh, we put mosquito repellent on and it's not seeming to do anything. There is some sort of gnat uh, devouring us, but we're still, still looking. Um, Looks like it's gonna to rain too, so. Rock bottom. This is going the way we're more used to. You're rock bottom. It's gonna rain, getting covered in bug bites and not finding what we're looking for. So this is more of a candy adventures video. We got spoiled by our last one. Okay, by some dumb luck, we found a mango tree. Here's a small mango. But it's a little small. There's some better ones higher up. But the problem is we're going to have a hard time getting to those uh, sweeter mangoes. All right, success. We got mangoes. No idea what we're going to do with them yet, but we'll figure it out. I'll have a Gordito Supreme. And hey, some cinnamon twist. Get the ladies some cinnamon twist. Nacho Bell Grande. Do you have Bejaw Blast? Yeah, we need Mountain Dew. Split that order up three ways, would you? Thanks, hon. Here we are, day two. We're gonna try to get meat today. So, in our last video, we had a couple requests trying to use a spear gun to get fish. So, for my birthday, I got a spear gun. Uh, if that fails, we have fishing poles, try to get something. Well, first catch of the day. Not edible, but still popping. Is it okay to say popping? No. Yeah. Even though it looks like food, we can't eat this either. So we're gonna go ahead and deflate it and keep fishing. We can keep them, right? If you want to, Christopher, we can keep them. Hey, you're right, I want to keep them. We've been fishing for four hours, and we are, I don't know, 200 yards from the truck, and something just hit. Oh, it's a what big jack. It's a big jack. It's a good one. It's a keeper. It's a big fatty. Chris, this is the biggest fish of it. Like, yeah, it's a big fish. Oh my god! Look at that! It's a big fish. Whoa! This is the biggest fish I've ever caught in my whole life. Oh my god, he's so fat. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Can handle the fish? Oh, thank you. Thank you. What the fuck? This is so cool. Patty? Yeah. Oh my god. This is so cool. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's so cool. All right. Day one was successful with our bananas, banana heart, and our salt. Day two was successful when she caught that big fish. And now day three, we wanted to add a little bit more to the menu because we're only using what we find out of the jungle. We want flavor, basically, because right now all we have is salt. So now we're hunting for flavor. We have our shrimp spear, our new and improved shrimp spear. And we found a uh, wild lime tree or lemon citrus, tree. Citrus yeah. tree. That uh, young Jacob, who doesn't want to be in the video back here, has showed us. White man can't jump. Oh, nice. So we got one. Maybe we'll grab one more just so we have plenty, but we don't take them all off the tree. But yeah, I'll try to grab one more kind of interesting sized and shaped here. Success. We got two. So hopefully that'll flavor up our food a little bit. So this is the salt water we collected from the sea. And the first thing I'm going to do is use a coffee filter. So we'll just kind of stand here with me while this happens. Probably should only take 10 or 15 minutes. I'll just turn my brain off and think about something else for a while. And you guys enjoy.
That's two liters of salt water. Let's see what the coffee filter got. You can't see with the camera, but you can see little, little pieces of sand and detritus in the water that we did strain out. So not as impressive as we thought it might've been, but we got any of the little fine particles out of there. Now we're gonna drop this pan in the oven for an undetermined amount of time at around 350 degrees and see what this cooks down to. So here we have our salt fresh out of the oven and you can see how much salt has uh, come out of that two liter bottle. Uh, I'm still interested in making this video and um, she is playing The Last of Us uh, Remastered 2. So she's not, be not being very helpful at all. There's a lot of salt in here, so we're gonna have plenty uh, for our cooking for this next segment of the video. So the rule apparently is, if you catch it, you clean it. So that is going to be my job. These trevally have giant, really hard scales called scoots, sort of like a turtle, and they're super sharp. And they actually put a hole in our boat uh, when I caught this. So it's always interesting to see what fish have in their stomachs, so we're going to see if we can cut this open. So that's definitely a whole fish. Are you with me now? Get ready. We're gonna lay them down. From the front to the back, you got to lay it down. Space it evenly, not scattered around. Next, you got to salt the meat from the back to the front to make the taste complete. Not too little, not too much. With a little finesse, you'll get the touch. Remember this rap and you'll be hot. Give the grill your very best shot. And soon you develop some real, real skill. You'll be tough on the grill. Yes, you will. Mr. Bill. Bill. Okay, welcome back. Go ahead and grab a beer or coffee or whatever you like to drink, a free start. The one thing we are considering is that because we did not get a lot in terms of flavor, we might have to cheat on this video and add something in order to make this better tasting. So if you've never seen a banana heart before, um, it's basically the flower at the end of the banana. And it has these layers, and inside these layers are all these little mini flowers. Um, what you're really looking for on the inside is to separate the edible from the inedible. And uh, inedible is very obvious. It is um, this baculum looking um, piece of the flower here. And uh, well, I don't know if you know what a baculum is, but it's the penis bone in a mammal. And you see them for sale in a lot of truck stops, like a raccoon, a raccoon baculum. They sell them as toothpicks. It's very common in South Carolina and Missouri and some of those more backward states like that. I'm the guy that sold 1,000 raccoon penis bones. I put them in a plastic tube and I sold them to America. And then there's another little uh, tough piece. It almost looks like the plastic circle that's punched out of a grocery bag. And once we get on the inside uh, of the banana is the heart of it, much like an artichoke heart. We're gonna chop that up and chop it up with these vegetables and stir fry it with the green bananas. So here's our bananas. A green banana has a, a stringent, um, kind of bitter, chalky flavor to it. It sucks all the spit out of your mouth. Um, that's what astringent means. Oh. We got our little uh, stove top grill here, and we're gonna go ahead and boil up these green bananas. So we're just going to let this footage roll while this boils for 10 or 15 minutes. While our bananas are over here boiling, we're going to go ahead and use our cheater sauce, so ingredients that uh, some of these ingredients we did not actually get. We did find uh, this mango tree. Similar to our previous catch and cook videos, we're making finadini, but we're gonna add mango to make it a little bit sweeter. So to open up the peppers a little bit, get them a little hotter, we're just gonna sm smash them with a spoon. About a clove of overly dry and sitting in the refrigerator forever garlic. That's very important to this recipe. 
With that, we're gonna add another cheater ingredient, which is a yellow onion, some vinegar, and then our soy sauce. So this is our finadini, and hopefully this will give our uh, lackluster cooking at least a little bit of flavor. These are the, the bananas. They've already been boiled. So Chris has already pre-pilled some of them, and then I can peel the remaining few. And we're gonna go ahead and saute those up. Uh, we have our fish all hot off the grill, our mango finadini hot sauce ready to go, and our banana heart and banana flour uh, stir fry and uh, green banana ready to go. So let's go ahead and dive in and give this a taste test. Oh, it's so what bitter. Is what is that? Oh, God. Oh, it's so bitter. Oh, it's so bitter. Oh, my God. Okay. So up. Oh, my God. Wait, hold on. I just swallowed it and it got worse. Um, rock bottom it. You're rock bottom it. Okay, so the, the banana flour was an absolute abomination. We did it wrong. I don't know if we're supposed to let it soak longer or what, but it's so astringent and bitter that that was not, that, that, that was not a, a human being can't eat that. I could think maybe only a bird, something without taste buds would not be able to eat that. So we pulled back and punted. Our fish turned out great. Our mango finadini turned out great. And we ended up refrying some bananas without the flowers in them. And we boiled this twice to try to get some more of the astringent flavor out. So let's go ahead and give this a try. We've been cooking dinner for like five hours. Hours now trying to get this to work out right. Um, so let's see how this goes. It's just delicious. Mm. Yeah, the, the mango, the mango finadini here and the fish is amazing. We have failed at literally everything else though in this video. Um, we failed at spear fishing. We failed at finding everything that's here on this wall conveniently uh, is supposed to grow on Guam. We didn't find almost all of it. No, we have a wall of the native species of fish and animals and plants. And it's like the wall of shame. <laughs> so thanks for the recommendation on doing a more like only eating what we can find from the land. As usual, we failed, but we have succeeded. Of course, a 69 is still an F. Just, failure. yeah, it's still an F, but it's still some percentage of success. I was uh, lighting the grill. I found this Katie did or whatever you want to call it um, laying on the grill. So uh, we're also going to feed the fish and this is a hundred percent um, hunter gatherer that we're going to be feeding fish's diet. So. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's legs are out.